Hello, I'm Captain Iceblock. My hero pool consists of all the heroes named Storm Spirit and Hero Spirit you, guides on Storm, other heroes, lanes, mechanics, and everything in between. I also stream, coach, and analyze your replays. To support the content, you can get one of those services or just buy me a cup of coffee on Patreon. And with all that said, let's go. Storm clouds are gathering! Viper has been slowly and steadily getting buffs here and there, and for most of 720 and 721 patch remained unseen. Until now, that is. I've started seeing some Vipers in my games, and these kind of Vipers were barely recognizable. Previously, with a Viper pick, your job was, most of the time, to zone out the opposing enemy player to stay in the lane until the enemy could no longer stay in the lane. Basically, an answer to a snowball enemy hero to prevent them from snowballing. Nowadays, Viper is that snowball hero. I've tried it myself, and boy does he dominate. Let's see why. The biggest culprit is the buff to the Nether Toxin. Its range got increased, and its damage too. And on top of that, it sports total of 5 seconds cooldown. Insane. Think of it as Alchemist's Acid Spray on steroids. Against melee and short-ranged opponents, Viper can keep his Nether Toxin on top of them indefinitely, either directly harassing or preventing them from reaching creeps without taking heavy damage. And coupled with the fact that Corrosive Skin is maxed second, most heroes that rely on right clicks cannot trade hits without heavy losses. And this is more or less why, against certain opponents and lineups, Viper can take over the game from minute 1. Let's talk how. Firstly, laning. For starting items, aim to get as much intelligence points as possible, as your early lane will rely on other toxin placements and expanding Viper's mana pool helps place more of them. Two circlets, two branches, that's one extra nether toxin cast. In lane, aim to place nether toxin around the enemy's ranged creep. This really hurts short range heroes who will have to dance around the area just to reach last hits. Against higher range heroes though, Viper should be more careful about the range creep, since if placed in nether toxin, it can be more easily denied. After quickly clearing the wave, Viper can either harass under the enemy tower or go stack some jungle camps for himself, both options are viable. At earlier levels, if Viper can reliably send enemy hero back to the base, he should probably harass more than venturing to stack. However, after Viper gets boots, walking around lane to jungle, stacking and killing should become the priority. And this is how the new Viper lanes. Clear the wave with nether toxin, harass or clear jungle. Don't even bother with runes, as only haste offers you an real advantage. When playing against heroes that can wave clear themselves, Viper can find time to wipe out 1-2 camps before returning to the tower to depush. Against heroes that cannot wave clear efficiently, Viper can often make a rotation of 3-4 to four camps before returning to the tower. We are talking meepo levels of farm here. And in tougher lanes, Viper with just 2 wave bands, threats on strength and fully leveled corrosive skin can tank up a lot of damage. If facing a hero with burst potential, such as Zeus, Lina, one or two selves will be a good trade to their mana pool after harassing you. Even if Viper managed to lose his lane, recovery in the jungle is extremely easy these days. Speaking of mana, Viper will need sustenance of his own. The easiest solution is to simply switch from strength threats to intelligence before casting another toxin. Other methods, such as clarities, mango, soul ring, or hiring a crystal maiden, are efficient too. And this concludes our early game playstyle. Now, as for itemization from there, it will depend on what the enemy team can do to you. Do they have the potential to gank up and kill you in a couple of seconds? Aim for raw health increase, and let another toxin and corrosive skin do the defense for you. Rod of Atos is really cheap, has useful active, and its stats buildup is really useful during laning. Hurricane Pike serves similar purpose. Whale is also a suitable option if your team relies on spell damage. Blade Mail is also viable, depending on the type of the enemy attacks. Otherwise, if enemy is too weak to comfortably nuke someone down, aim for sustained healing. Mech into Greaves will negate any smaller damage enemies might chip away and is great for forcing down towers, same principle applies to Pipe and Greaves respectively. You are the tanky or a carrier for your team. Other great situational items include Drums, Urn, and if Viper doesn't plan to end the game before minute 30, Midas. Speaking of Midas, that's one more reason why Viper shines so much in this meta. 
Your usual carry player will probably pick up Midas before any teamfight item, as he is used to. Except Midas is now the reason the team lost the game, since it cannot be used on the Viper, who is now pushing high ground. However, if the game does drag on, later item pickups should reflect what the team needs. For stronger pushing and right-click power, Mjolnir, any Yasha variant, and Butterfly significantly increases Viper's auto-attack output. If Viper can deal more damage just by running around dropping debuffs, Aghanims with Octarine later will offer unparalleled survival. Consider hard to with these items. For dealing with enemy spells, choose between BKB, Lincolns, Manta, and Lotus. Viper's versatility in items is what allows him to scale well into the late game when needed. And lastly, Talents. They are pretty self-explanatory, so let's go over the most popular pickups. Spell Lifesteal is preferable over attack speed, as leeching back health from Nether Toxin and the passive increases Viper's tankiness. Plus 6 Crows of Skin stats work in the same manner, increasing survivability. Now, level 20 talent is a trickier one. If Viper is in a position where he can apply poison attack on buildings, odds are Viper and his team is already very well equipped to be pushing in the first place. The only benefit I see to this pickup is so Viper can chip away from low ground with increased range. Otherwise, Viper Strike, unveiled targets in Nether Toxin, can absolutely delete lower health resistance heroes. Should the game ever reach the state where Viper is 25, Nether Toxin now becomes both Acid Spray and Smoke Cloud on steroids, and should be picked up most of the time, unless Viper is the hero that team relies on to deal physical damage. And this concludes our look at the new Viper. I'll leave you with the rest of the match. Good luck. Bottom tower is under attack. <laughs> Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. <laughs> Dyer's structures are fortified. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack.
take that as tribute. Death's bounty. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower has been denied. Denied. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. I guess. Ownage. <laughs> Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Dyer's top tower is under attack. They're unstoppable. Double kill. Poison. 
Dyer's top barracks has fallen. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's top barracks has fallen. Dyer's middle barracks has fallen. Killing spree. Onage. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Dyer's bottom barrel. Dyer's bottom barrel. The radiant now have measurements. Dyer's ancient is under attack. My favorite kill is the Monk Onage. 